Okay, let's take a look at number one here. The first thing to notice is we're asked to graph this uh, and label it, and it's an x equals y squared form. So that is a horizontal parabola. Because the y squared term is positive, we know this horizontal parabola opens to the right, okay? So now I need to try to gather as many points I can and figure out what the axis of symmetry is, and then we should be pretty good to get a little nice rough sketch. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is let y be 0. If I let y be 0, both of these will 0 out, and you get x equals negative 1. So when y is 0, x is negative 1. So that gives me one point right away, and this is going to be um, my x-intercept, okay? The next thing that I would probably do is let uh, x be 0 and try to solve this. But just kind of looking ahead, that's not going to factor really nicely, and uh, so I'd have to use the quadratic formula. So that's going to be a little bit of work to get some um, weird answers that I'll have to approximate with my calculator. So I'm going to skip that step. And let's go right to the axis of symmetry. So we know the axis formula is minus b over 2a. So let's, let, let's put this in minus b. b here is a negative 2. So minus a negative 2 will be a positive 2 divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay. So with a horizontal parabola, our axis of symmetry is y equals. So I have the line y equals 1 as my axis of symmetry, all right? Okay, great. Uh, I'll probably just gather another point or two just to get some more points to put on there. So when I'm gathering points and it's written in this form, you're going to want to plug in for y. So let's see what happens when y equals 1. I'll get y squared minus 2 minus 1. So y minus 2 minus 1. 1 minus 2 Minus 1 is going to be negative 2 for x. All right, so that's one point. And let's go ahead and let's, let's see what happens if y is 2. You're going to get 4 minus 4, which is 0, minus 1. Okay? So this point here and these two points and the axis of symmetry being y equals 1 should be enough for me to get a nice little rough sketch here. Okay, so let's do that. So... I'm going to erase this. So I have these points, and I have this one as my axis of symmetry, uh, which is my vertex. So let's do a nice little sketch here. All right, and we know it opens to the right. So let's graph a few of these points. So we have negative 2 comma 1, which is right here, and this is my vertex and also my horizontal axis of symmetry. We have negative 1 comma 2, which is right here, and we have negative 1, 0, which is right here. Okay? So, and we know it opens to the right, so I'm just going to sketch in a little skinny parabola coming through here. And if you want, you're certainly welcome to get a couple more points just to make sure uh, you know you fit in this parabola better. But as long as I know that this is my axis of symmetry, here's my vertex, and it opens to the right, I can really just get three or four points, and I'll have a really, really nice sketch. Okay. Okay, uh, number two, we're told that this is a circle, and I'm asked to find the center and the uh, radius. Um, the first thing that I need to realize is I have x squared and an x term, and I have y squared and y term. And notice another thing is everything is divisible by 4, okay? So right away what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by 4. I'm going to put the x terms together and the y terms together. So let's see if I can do that in one step. Dividing everything by 4, we'll have x squared. This divided by 4 is 6, so minus 6x. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room. Then dividing this by 4, we have y squared. Uh, dividing by 4 plus 4y, and leave a little bit of room, and on this side, dividing by 4, you have 12, okay? Now, I need to complete the square on the x terms and the y terms, and add the appropriate number to balance the equation. So if I take half of 6, you get 3, and if you square 3, you get 9. So I need to add a 9 here to make this a perfect square y squared uh, plus 4y, divide 4 by 2, you get 2, square 2, you get 4. So I need to add 4 here to make that a perfect square. So if I add 9 and 4 to one side of an equation, you absolutely have to add 9 and 4 to the other side of the equation. 
So since 9 plus 4 is um, 13, I'm going to add 13 to this side as well. Okay? And then this is going to be a perfect square, so it's x minus 3 quantity squared, plus this is going to be a perfect square, y plus 2 quantity squared equals 12 plus 13, which is 25, and that's r squared. Uh, so I'm going to put 5 squared, which is 25. All right, this is perfectly set up now for our equation of a circle, and now I can read off what the uh, center of the circle is and what the radius is. So the center is x minus h, so 3, uh, y minus k, so negative 2, and my radius is r, so that's 5. Okay. So if you wanted to graph this, you would find the center point 3 comma negative 2, and you'd go out 5, and then you could do draw your circle around. And that's it. Okay, let's take a look at number 3. We're asked to identify and graph this. Uh, quickly, you can see you have a positive x squared, a negative y squared, and 9. So this is going to be a hyperbola, uh, with the x value being positive. So I want to put it in standard form, so I need to divide everything to get a 1 over here by 9. If I divide that by 9, over here you're going to get x squared over 9, which is 3 squared, minus, these 9's reduce out, so you get y squared over an improper form, 1 squared, and then of course we have the equals the positive 1, which we wanted. Okay? Now the positive value is the x value, and that has the 3 here. The negative value is the y value, and that has the 1. So, we know this hyperbola it goes with the positive value where the intercepts are. So you have intercepts at 3 and negative 3. And then the question is, how do I graph the rest of this? Well, the y value is 1, so I'm going to go 1 here. So you want to draw a little rectangle going out the x value of 3 and up the y value of 1. And the reason why we draw this rectangle is because we're going to do diagonals. And that's going to help us form where our hyperbola values go. They go toward these diagonals. Okay? Voila! And there's your hyperbola. Again, the x value is positive, so it's on the 3 and the negative 3. And then you just draw your rectangular diagonals to get where the little um, curves go. Okay. Okay, on number 4 here, uh, the equation 4x squared plus y squared equals 16. Both values are positive. Again, there's a 16 over here, so we need to make that a 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 16 and put this in standard form. And this is going to be an ellipse, which is our football-shaped looking thing. So we're going to get x squared over 4, which is 2 squared, y squared over 16, which is 4 squared, divide uh, equals 1. Okay. So this should be really easy to draw. This is an ellipse. I need to go out. A little bit on each side. The x value distance, I'm going to go out 2 and 2. The y value distance, I'm going to go out 4 and 4. And then you just want to kind of fill in your little ovally football shaped looking ellipse. Okay? x squared over 2 squared plus y squared over 4 squared equals 1. And that's it. Okay, number 5 here. Again, you have a positive y squared and a negative x squared, so this is going to be back to a hyperbola. I need to get a 1 over here, so I'm going to divide everything by 9. Uh, and that's going to produce a 1 everywhere. So let's see, we'll get y squared over 1 squared, oh, I'm sorry, minus, that's a minus, x squared over 1 squared equals 1. Okay? So again, you got to go with the positive one. So this is going to have intercepts on the y axis. So let's go ahead and draw that right away. So if I go up positive 1 and negative 1, you're going to have intercepts on the y-axis. And then, of course, we're going to draw in our diagonals. So I'm going to put my little rectangle at 1, 1, all the 1's. And then I'm going to draw a little dotted line through these rectangle diagonals. And then your curves kind of go toward those diagonals. Okay? So the important thing is it, it's a hyperbola that opens up and down and the intercepts are at 1 and negative 1 because the y squared value is the one that's positive. And that's it. 
Okay, if you take a look at number six here, they try to trick you by having the negative x squared over here, but of course we need to put it in standard form. So we want the x squared and y squared both on the left side. So when I add that x squared over, it becomes pretty obvious that this is, well, there's two ways to look at this. This is actually an ellipse, but it's also a circle, okay? Um, this is a circle with a center hk of zero. So it's like x minus zero squared plus y minus zero squared equals r squared. So it has a radius of six, okay? And another way of doing this is you could have div divided both sides by 36, and you'll just get an ellipse um, with equal values of six on all sides. And that's why it's a circle either way you look at it. So right away, I'm going to recognize this as a circle. The center of this circle is 0, 0. And the radius is this side, 6 squared. So the radius is 6. OK, so quickly, easy to draw. Uh, my center is 0, 0. And then I'm going to go out 6 on each side. So go out 6 on each side. And then I'm sure you can draw way better than me. Just try to put a smooth looking circle. And that's it, okay? So don't fall for the trick of the negative x squared being over here. Bring it over to this side first. And you're done. Okay, on number seven, we have to graph these inequalities, all right? So you really need to know what each of these looks like without the inequality symbol first. So if I look at y equals x squared plus 1, I need to know what the graph of that looks like. And if I looked at just y equals 5, I need to know what the graph of that looks like. Okay? y equals x squared plus 1 is just your standard parabola, and it's up one spot. Okay? So I'm going to do a quick graph of that. So we're up one spot. So 0, 1. And here's my parabola. Okay? Now, I'm going to use a test point. If I use the test point 0, 0, 0 is greater than or equal to 1. That's false. Okay? So I wouldn't shade on the outside. I'm going to shade in the inside of the parabola. So, so far, everything inside the parabola is being shaded. Okay? Because I used the test point 0, 0, and it was false. So you want to shade on the opposite side. The other one is y is less than or equal to 5. Well, if I, you look at y equals 5, that's just a horizontal line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That comes through right here. OK? And again, uh, you use a test point. Um, any test point on the, off the line, uh, if I use 0, 0 is less than or equal to 5. So I would shade everything underneath that line. So I'm shading everything underneath that line and everything inside the parabola. So that's only going to leave just this little section of area that should be shaded, okay? Everything underneath the line and everything inside the parabola is only going to leave that scoop of area that's going to make up your answer. Okay, and finally, number eight here. We have x squared plus y squared is less than 16. So pretend that x squared plus y squared equals 16. Well, as we know that this is a circle, and the radius of this circle is 4, okay? So I'm going to draw a quick circle with the radius of 4, and then we'll do a quick test point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, the circle here, x squared plus y squared, that's set at a center of 0, 0. So I go out 4 on each. Now, because it's less than and not equal to, it's not a solid line or curve, but a dotted curve. So your circle here is dotted like this. It's not solid. OK? And again, I'm going to use a test point. So let me use a test point 0, 0 and see if it's true. Is 0 plus 0 less than 16? Yes, that's true. So you want to shade everything inside the circle and nothing outside the circle. So your answer is this dotted circle with everything inside shaded. And that is the answer to your original inequality, OK? With these inequalities, all you can do is, is shade it the best you can, OK? All right, so for your final exam, you need to study all of your practice exams, 1, 2, and 3, and together with this uh, chapter 13 stuff, OK? And that'll be your best study guide uh, to do well on your exam. And that's it.